I'm Harold Monroe, Editor-in-Chief of the Vancouver Sun and Province, and joining me is Andrew Enns, Executive Vice President with the National Polling Firm Leger, to share some insights into their new poll on BC's provincial election. Welcome, Andrew. Hi, thanks, Harold. Uh, great to join you, and I really appreciate this uh, this opportunity to talk a little bit more, you know, in depth. What's behind the numbers? I think it's a really good idea on on your part in your uh, in your organization. Well, I'm very excited to get this first poll from you guys as well, Andrew. And this is a busy time for you. You've just come off accurately predicting the outcome of the recent New Brunswick election, and now you're tracking the electorate in uh, BC and in Saskatchewan. So maybe before we get into the BC poll results, have you observed anything different in terms of voter behavior as you're following these elections during a pandemic? Um, yeah, it's a, it's a good question. You know, it's what I would say so far, and, and again, with uh, with sort of a, a little bit of in-depth sort of work in New Brunswick and, and sort of seeing sort of the initial returns in, in Saskatchewan and in British Columbia, I would say this, that voters are are taking a little time to get warmed up to the whole the whole business of election and politics. I think what what I've what we found in in New Brunswick was, um, you know, initial voting voting behaviors sort of locked in. You see in our British Columbia numbers. We may talk about this later. How there's a certain uh, committedness to the ballot where people aren't really. Um, you know, looking to, 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 they've already made a choice, they're not looking to change. What I what I chalk that up to, to some degree, is that we've been so fixated as as, as Canadians and as British Columbians uh, on, on one particular issue now for going on almost eight months, and it's not going away, and it hasn't been politics, uh, and, and politics really, really hasn't weighed in in any real degree, and I think what, so all of a sudden now as Canadians, as voters, we're being asked to change the lens a little bit and and think politics. And we're just, so I think we're going to have to get warmed up to this uh, to some degree. And, I, and and part of that's going to be whether, um, you know, can the parties, uh, you know, engage to a point where they can really connect, you know, get voters engaged again. I think there's a little bit of a, an engagement issue right now. Hmm, interesting. Well, in your, in your new poll for BC, which was conducted <laughs> September 24th to 28th, Voter intentions lean heavily to the NDP, like 47% to 31% for the Liberals and 12% for the Greens. Um, the BC Conservative Party is at 9%, and, and there's some people who believe that many of those votes will go to ultimately go to the Liberals on Election Day. But is that what Wilkinson needs to happen at this point? Like, what, what would it take for the Liberals to make up that gap at this point? Well, I think I think for sure, uh, if he could, uh, if he could, uh, you know, gain, uh, you know, the lion's share of that BC Conservative ballot, that would that would go a long way, at least getting him in the right direction. It would get him up and around that forty percent mark, and that's where he kind of ended up in in uh, twenty seventeen, or or the the BC Liberals ended up in twenty seventeen. Is it enough? Uh, he needs a still a little bit more help, I would suggest. And I think for that, he needs to probably keep an eye on what happens to the Green Party in this election. And also to a degree, what how uh, how uh, Premier Horgan and, and his team perform the campaign trail. But, but, uh, but uh, you know, 40% is okay as long as you keep that NDP number close to 40%. Then I think you get into a situation. But but at this stage, um, you know, Oregon's still got a lead, uh, you know, even if that conservative vote shifts largely to uh, to the Liberals. He also appears to have a two to one lead when when you asked about who has the best plan to govern, like 33 percent to 16 percent over Andrew Wilkinson and, and the Liberals. There is that large percentage there, 25 percent, who don't know, perhaps because neither party's released their platforms yet. So I guess to your point. People are some people are waiting to see what the parties roll out, but it's going to have to really stick with them. Well, for sure, right? And and I think you know, um, I think in part you, we saw a fairly significant platform item that rolled out earlier this week, sort of after our polling had uh, had wound up, and that's with the BC Liberals and their PST uh, holiday that they're proposing for a year, and then and then a sort of a phased back back in, and that's obviously. Uh, you know, I think it's from from my take. It's 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 got some attention, and I think from, you know, obviously, I think from from the BC Liberals and Wilkinson standpoint, yeah, you have to understand where they're coming out of this. Is is that they've had eight months 
almost eight months of, of pandemic politics, which has meant no politics. Like, how, how do you attack the governing party on what they're trying to do to keep British Columbians safe? I mean, very challenging time for them. And, and other issues, other important issues, housing, the opioid the situation, uh, you know, Site C and pipelines, they've percolated along but hard to get any traction if you're the opposition on those things. It's really been one one big dominant issue, and that's what's fixated the public. And so for, for the Liberals in Wilkinson, he needed to he needed to change that a bit. He needed to put something in the window that really uh, um, would really get people talking. And and maybe he succeeded. Uh, I think we'll we'll want to we'll want to watch that as we as we poll and and follow this campaign uh, to its conclusion. I was interested in because you asked uh, folks. Um, whether they were in support of or opposed the call of an early election. We know that uh, John Oregon opted to go for the polls three years into a mandate instead of waiting uh, the full four years. Um, and roughly half, 49%, said they opposed the early, elections, the early election call, but I guess not surprisingly that opposition is highest among the opposition Liberals and the Green Party. How significant a factor is this going to be in the outcome of the election, do you think? Well, I think I, I think the jury's out on that. I, I think in the in the short term, uh, I think Horgan can manage this. I think he needs to to you know to get out and and clearly explain why why he's doing this and and um, you know and I think he can do that. I think where this con- this could come back to potentially be a problem for the NDP is if the COVID situation takes takes a, a you know some dire turns in the province. We see like something it has in Ontario, Quebec, something like like that. Exactly, and I mean, it, it's not that it's uh, it's you know everywhere we're seeing uh, you know our tracking, we're seeing concerns going up with respect to the to the situation, but it's but it's manageable. And and right now, like our number, you know, we track the the governments across the country in terms of performance weekly in our in our national uh, tracking on the COVID survey and. And BC has consistently been among the top governments in terms of managing. So I think if he maintains that, then the early call will, I, I believe, will not be a problem. Uh, I think people will focus on the job at hand. And and I would point out, uh, Harold, that there's a que- another question we asked that sort of contradicts a little bit. Do you, would they like a majority or minority uh, coming out of this election? And well, lo and behold, you, you see a slight majority wanting a majority. So it says to me that there is a notion that says, OK, this election may have not been the best timing, but getting a majority might not be bad in this particular time for British Columbia. So so they, there's there's room there for, for the premier to, to work past this uh, this issue. And that you're right. I, I, I noticed that response as well. And that would appear on the face of it to be good news for John Horgan and the NDP, because um, he has gone to the people and said that one of the reasons he's going early is because he needs a strong mandate to get us through the pandemic and economic recovery. One of the things we saw in New Brunswick, New Brunswick was a was a very precarious minority situation, and uh, and so you know again you saw the the premier uh, Higgs, uh, you know the conservative progressive conservative uh, call that and use that as part of his rationale. Uh, the the um, the you know the 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 smaller parties who were basically the kingmakers in the in the minority in this case you know in British Columbia would be the Greens um, you'll see them advocate strongly on the campaign to try to to try to argue for that minority but we we saw that in New Brunswick it that kind of fell on deaf ears uh, you know the prospect of stability is 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 compelling for at this particular time. Hmm. You also, as you mentioned, you talked about some some issues in this poll and asked people to rate them. And perhaps not surprisingly, economic recovery, household finances, health concerns related to the pandemic are right at the top. And housing affordability is relatively strong. We know that's been an issue for a long time in B.C. Climate change and the opioid crisis have been pushed to the bottom. Is, Is there anything surprising in what you saw? You know, no, I, I um, certainly just the discussion around the economy and the jobs. I'm, I'm not surprised to see that number up there. Uh, obviously, very close to it is the pandemic, managing the pandemic. And I do think that it's, uh, you know, and even with that, 
even that general health state of the healthcare system. I do see, you know, the two headed beast here with respect to how the parties are going to want to touch voters. You know, uh, they'll have a very strong healthcare caring message and strength of the system. Um, and that'll likely, the, the NDP will try to play on their record on that. And then um, what you will have is the Liberals, their traditional ground would be the economy, and they will use their PST promise to try to get at that cost of living uh, and, and use that as sort of bolstering economy and, and helping on cost of living. So you start to see how the parties are jockeying and, and, and how they're going to try to win the hearts and minds of voters here, uh, you know, early on. Mm. So you'll be polling again soon. Others are polling as well. What should our viewers be watching for in the next batch of, of numbers that they see from you and from others? What will you be looking for? Well, I, I'll be looking for, um, you know, first of all, I'll be looking at in the overall picture to see what's happening to the green voters and the conservative voters. Are we seeing any sort of uh, shift? Are we seeing anything? Are they solidifying? Particularly if the greens start to solidify their vote and potentially grow their vote a bit, that's likely coming at the expense of the NDP and probably spells a bit of trouble for, for Horgan. Um, but if, it, you know, so that'll be one thing for sure I think is going to be important to look for. Um, I think the second is, um, you know, we haven't touched on it, but but there is really no there is no really one British Columbia when it comes to an election. There's there's multiple little parts of British Columbia that that ultimately, uh, you know, how they vote uh, play into it, play into the election. And and so, you know, I, what we saw is traditionally, you know, the NDP are strong in Vancouver Island and, and in Vancouver, parts of that south interior. And we see that occurring here. Um, where we see the NDP strong in our poll, that is a bit of a surprise, is in the in that lower mainland area, the Surreys and the Burnabys and you know the Coquitlams, that band uh, stretching underneath Vancouver. That spells trouble if if you're a Liberal supporter, uh, because that that tends to be the the tipping point. Uh, you know which party can can win there. And so that'll be the that'll be the other area that I'll keep an eye on is, is what's happening in, in some of these regional battlegrounds. I think that's going to increasingly become important. Great. Well, thanks for all your insights today, Andrew. I, I look forward to, to the next Leger poll and we'll do this again. Oh, that's uh, that's great. Enjoy, enjoy chatting with you, Harold, and have yourself a good rest of the day.